Creating over 4,000 original paintings over the course of his prolific career, Norman Rockwell's name has been eternally etched in the conversation of American art. Regardless of the focus of his work, Rockwell was known for being a master of depicting the subtle emotions of everyday life through his detailed illustrations. Today, when the topic of Americana comes up, it is impossible not to include Norman Rockwell in the discussion. But how did the legacy of this iconic American artist begin? Born to Jarvis and Ann Rockwell on February 3, 1894, in New York City, Norman was a quiet boy who grew up moving from boarding house to boarding house with his family. As a child, Rockwell never viewed himself in a special light. In fact, he has said that he thought himself nothing more than a lump, a long, skinny nothing, a beanpole without the beans. Growing up, Rockwell was not inclined to athletics, nor to scholarly work. In his words, all he had was the ability to draw. At age 14, Rockwell was called into the principal's office due to his poor performance in school, and his principal asked whether Rockwell wanted to graduate high school or go to art school. Shortly after that conversation, Rockwell dropped out of high school and began attending Chase Art School before attending the National Academy of Design and finally, the Art Students League. At the Art Students League, Rockwell studied under great American illustrators and painters Thomas Fogarty and George Bridgman. The artistic principles that he learned from these men set the foundation for the rest of his art career. At the age of just 19, Rockwell became the art editor for Boy's Life magazine, published by Boy Scouts of America, a connection he would hold onto for a vast majority of his life. His first piece for Boy's Life was published in 1913 and was titled Scout at Ship's Wheel. In 1915, Rockwell and his family moved to New Rochelle, New York, where they shared a studio with Clyde Forsythe, an illustrator for the Saturday Evening Post. With the help of Forsythe, Rockwell submitted his first successful cover to the Saturday Evening Post. This illustration was published in 1916 and was titled Mother's Day Off. This illustration playfully depicts a young boy pushing a baby carriage while being teased by other young boys out playing baseball. In the following seven months, the Saturday Evening Post published five more Rockwell covers, Circus Barker and Strongman, Gramps at the Plate, Redhead Loves Hattie Perkins, People in a Theater Balcony, and Man Playing Santa. Over the next 47 years, Rockwell created 323 covers for the Saturday Evening Post. Rockwell's success with the Saturday Evening Post led to opportunities with other renowned magazines, such as Literary Digest and Life. Although Rockwell left his job with Boy's Life and Boy Scouts of America in 1916, he still maintained a great relationship with them. In 1926, he began producing the first of what would be 51 illustrations for the Boy Scouts of America calendar. In 1943, Rockwell was inspired by Franklin Delano Roosevelt's memorable State of the Union address, where FDR solemnly declared four universal and necessary freedoms. This iconic speech triggered Rockwell to create his world-famous Four Freedoms series. These four paintings titled Freedom of Speech, Freedom of Worship, Freedom from Want, and Freedom from Fear were met with enormous success. Immediately after their production, these paintings became the highlight of a traveling exhibition that was sponsored by both the Saturday Evening Post and the U.S. Department of Treasury. During this exhibition tour, these paintings traveled to 16 cities where over one million people came to see them. This exhibition raised nearly $133 million in war bonds and stamps, aiding greatly in the World War II war effort. However, shortly after the release and success of the Four Freedoms paintings, tragedy struck Rockwell when a fire erupted which destroyed his studio, burning many of his props, costumes, and original paintings inside. Rather than acting as a setback, this tragedy actually caused Rockwell to grow as an artist. At this point, the focus of Rockwell's painting shifted. 
now depicting modern characters existing in modern settings and dealing with events that were taking place at the time. In the following years, Rockwell continued producing illustrations for the Post with his new modern twist. This time period established Rockwell as an emotional and nostalgic painter, focusing on idealistic images of daily American life. In a sense, Rockwell became synonymous with the iconic image of the American dream. This changed in 1963, when Rockwell ended his 47-year relationship with the Saturday Evening Post and began making covers for Look Magazine. At this point, Rockwell's work entered a third phase and his focus shifted once again, this time towards bigger social issues, including civil rights and poverty. His most notable work of this time and one of the most potent of his career is The Problem We All Live With, centered around Ruby Bridges and desegregation. Norman Rockwell passed away on November 8th of 1978 in Stockbridge, Massachusetts. To this day, Norman Rockwell is known as one of the greatest American illustrators and painters of all time, and his legacy continues to live on and inspire new generations of artists. Norman Rockwell's impact stretched far beyond painting and illustrating. He was not only an excellent painter and illustrator, he was a phenomenal storyteller. Using his pencil and paintbrush, Rockwell was able to tell stories like no one else. Relatable stories which spoke to people, pulled on their heartstrings, and created symphonies in their minds that played to the memories of their own lives. To see other renowned artists as well as additional stunning works of art, go to RareCollectiblesTV.com. That's RareCollectiblesTV.com.